Hello, and thank you for joining me today to talk a little bit about the science and technology behind Convitex adhesives. My name is Neil Cardi, and I'm the Vice President of Research and Development for Ostomy Care at Convitec. I joined the team late last year. My expertise is in medical adhesives R&D and product development, and my responsibility is to lead the team that's focused on new product development, bringing new solutions to patients and clinicians in this space. Convitec is dedicated to pioneering trusted medical solutions to improve the lives we touch. And a big part of that vision is to invest in R&D capabilities that help us advance our goals. We're currently expanding our capabilities to include a new innovation center in the Boston area that will bring further capabilities in materials and design for manufacturing, mechatronics and sensors, clinical decision support, and user-centered design. I'm very excited to be joining the team at such an important point in Convitec's journey. The learning objectives for today's session are to talk about some of the material science behind adhesion. I'll talk to you about the importance of a concept called viscoelasticity, explain how that affects adhesion, and talk about some ways that we can improve adhesion by exploiting that phenomenon. Finally, I'll talk about the relationship between viscoelasticity and Convitex moldable adhesive technology. So let's begin. The question I have is, does a warm adhesive actually stick better? The advice is often given that you should warm up an adhesive wafer uh, in your hands, that the heat of your hand can improve adhesion, that somehow heating a, an ostomy wafer can improve the adhesion to your skin. But is this true? What would be the science behind this? That's what I'll hope to address with you today. So our journey begins in 1920s Australia. So I'll take you on a little bit of a tangent first and tell you about an experiment that holds the Guinness World Record for the longest running laboratory experiment. So almost 100 years ago, a professor at the University of uh, Queensland in Australia performed an experiment with his class where he took a piece of pitch. Now pitch is not something we usually use anymore, but it looks like a lump of coal, like in the upper right hand corner. It's a solid material that's sort of like a rock. What the professor did was he, he put that into a glass funnel and he let it sit there and nothing happened and nothing happened. And finally, eight years later, a drop of pitch flowed out of the bottom of the funnel. This experiment continues to run to this day. You can actually see a live feed of it in the bottom right corner of my screen. A drop of pitch falls out about once every 10 years. So why does it flow? If it looks like a rock, how come it flows like drops if you give it enough time? And the answer is viscoelasticity. Viscoelasticity is a concept that describes materials that behave a little bit like a liquid and a little bit like a solid. If you think about the differences, if you take a liquid material and you put it on a surface, it will spread and form a puddle. If you take a solid material and put it on a surface, it will just sit there and retain its shape. Viscoelastic materials start off um, like a solid. They'll retain their shape for a period of time, but if you let them sit long enough, they'll eventually flow like a liquid. And so this is a really important concept when it comes to adhesives and polymer materials. How long you wait, have to wait depends on the material, but viscoelastic materials will eventually flow if given enough time. Polymers are all viscoelastic. Polymers are materials that are made by linking together smaller molecules into longer chains. So basically all plastic materials, rubber materials, these are polymers. All polymers are viscoelastic to some degree. They have a balance of both solid-like behavior and liquid-like behavior. And the balance depends on what the polymer is made of and how long the chains actually are. I'll give you an example in the bottom of my screen. You can see a material for the same type of material. If we make short chains of that material, it can behave like a syrupy liquid because those chains are short enough that they can move around each other quite easily. And, and basically the material is a liquid, it can flow. If you take that same material and make longer chains out of it, it'll behave a lot more like a solid because those chains get entangled with one another and they can't move as easily. When we develop adhesive formulations, we're basically working with viscoelasticity to optimize that adhesion level. Adhesives are made by designing the polymer structures or mixing different polymers together to get that balance just right. If you think about the first few seconds or few, first few minutes after an adhesive material touches your skin, when it first hits your skin, it's going to behave like a solid. It's going to sit there like a solid piece of material, 
Um, and if it's, if it's too solid-like, it will just stay in that position and it will never sort of flow into the texture of your skin and make a good bond. On the other hand, if the material is too liquid-like, it will flow very quickly. It'll fill in all the gaps and, and, and surface texture of your skin, but it will be too easy to smear it around. It won't have any body or strength and it won't hold anything in place. When we design a good adhesive, we're really balancing the solid-like behavior and the liquid-like behavior. And if we get that balance just right, we can get that material to make very intimate contact with the surface texture of the skin, but also remain strong enough that it'll keep its grip and hold fast when it's subjected to different forces. So coming back to my original question, we were talking about warmth though. So I'm telling you about how adhesives flow to touch the skin, but the original question was, why would a warm adhesive stick better than a cold one? And viscoelasticity actually explains this. Um, so we know that we're trying to balance adhesion by um, having the, the material flow just enough to stick to, the, to, to make a bond with the skin. When the flat adhesive first touches the rough surface, the bond is relatively weak because there's very few points of contact. But if it's given time to flow, it can actually contour to the surface texture of your skin and make a stronger bond. So if you leave it long enough, it will eventually fill in all of those gaps. So what is the relationship between time and temperature? Why would warming it help? So to answer that question, we really have to think about what is the definition of temperature? So if you think about an adhesive, as, which is made up of polymers, like we talked about before, polymers are thread-like molecules. Think about it as kind of like a soup of molecules all tangled up with one, with one another, or almost like a bowl of spaghetti. Temperature is actually, def the definition of temperature is the amount of movement that these molecules are undergoing. So these chains are constantly like, wiggling, vibrating, moving around each other, like the, like the, di uh, the animation on my screen. And the higher the temperature, the faster those motions. If we actually lower temperature all the way to absolute zero, which is negative 460 degrees Fahrenheit, all of those molecular motions would stop. So the higher the temperature, the more the molecules are moving around each other, wiggling, vibrating, and, and, and the more dynamic they are. So what this means is that in polymers, temperature and time are very closely related. If we think about that soup of vibrating molecules and we sort of squeeze it, we put it under some sort of pressure, the behavior of the adhesive as we stick it onto the skin is gonna reflect what's going on with the molecules in that adhesive. So if we want that adhesive to flow into the surface texture of the skin and we want it to sink down and make a good bond, we, those tangled up molecules that are inside of that polymer material have to kind of unravel from one another and sort of move to flow into that texture. The faster that they're wiggling, the faster that they can separate from one another and change shape and, and adopt that new sort of, um, that new surface texture. So what that means really is that higher temperature means that the molecules are moving faster, they're wiggling more around each other, they're quicker to unravel, to change shape, and that means that time and temperature can really be thought of as the same thing. So if we think about temperature as defining how much molecular motion there is inside of a material, that actually translates to what happens with an adhesive when you apply it to the skin. Think again about the adhesive as a, as a collection of polymers. So they're long thread-like molecules, they're entangled with, with one another. Think about it as kind of that bowl of spaghetti. The molecules are moving and they're moving faster at higher temperature. When you first take a piece of adhesive and you put it onto a skin, you sort of squeeze it or press it down onto the skin, the behavior of that adhesive is determined by what's happening with those molecules. If the molecules are moving very quickly and they're able to unravel from one another very quickly, then that adhesive can change shape faster. It can sink into the skin, conform to the surface texture and make a good bond. So the relationship is for viscoelastic materials, time and temperature are actually the same thing. You can either wait a long time for that material to sink in, or you can warm it up, accelerate that molecular motion, and that will happen faster. So in summary, adhesives are, again, viscoelastic materials. They behave as both solid-like and liquid-like. And the balance of that solid-like and liquid-like behavior is what we're engineering when we, when we formulate new adhesives. 
Given time, that liquid-like behavior lets the adhesive flow into the microtexture of the skin, and that increases bond strength. Flow is faster at higher temperatures because the molecules are moving faster. And so that means that indeed, warming an adhesive can accelerate its bond to the skin. There are other ways that we can use viscoelasticity to our advantage as well. And I want to speak to you now about Combitex moldable technology and how viscoelasticity determines its, its performance. We can use viscoelasticity in sort of the reverse way. We've seen how liquid-like behavior, meaning flow, can help a solid-like material, an adhesive, create a better bond to the skin. Now, let's look at a different case where the material's solid-like behavior can create sort of a rebounding effect that helps to create a better seal around the stoma. Convitex moldable technology combines materials with different viscoelastic profiles to create a secure seal around the stoma. We first use the liquid-like behavior of two hydrocolloid adhesive layers to make it a skin barrier that can be easily formed and molded. The liquid-like behavior is what lets us deform the shape of the, of the opening to conform around the stoma. Compared to the, the hydrocolloids, there's a middle layer of polyethylene film, which is also viscoelastic, but has a more solid-like character. And that makes the material want to return to its original shape. It gives it a rebounding effect. And this forms the basis of our, of our rebounding memory technology. By choosing the combination of materials with the right balance of solid-like and liquid-like character, the Convitec Moldable technology helps us to provide a custom fit every time. It responds and rebounds us to, to size fluctuations. We can deform the center, the, the hole to accommodate the stoma. The elastic recovery, the solid-like behavior, lets that sort of snap back and conform to the stoma. And as the stoma changes shape, it can adapt to those changes as well through that right balance of solid-like and liquid-like behavior. So again, viscoelasticity, just taking advantage of it in a different way from how we engineer adhesives. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this has been an informative presentation.